So, a few months ago, I recently built my very own PC with an NVIDIA RTX 3080, an Intel Core i9 processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and so far it's been running great. I installed Windows 11 on it because I built it for gaming, which is really needless to say because besides running programs like the Adobe Suite, that's the only reason why anyone should want to install Windows on a computer at this point. And very recently, I got myself a cheap $200 laptop, slapped Linux Mint on it because I really wanted to have a dedicated laptop that boots up fast, runs fairly quick, and lets me write scripts while I'm sitting in my recliner having the TV on in my living room. Anyway, as I was done building my gaming dream machine and installing Linux Mint on my laptop, I got myself to thinking about Apple computers and how pointless they really are for people who are ignorant about technology. Now, before I go deeper into why I think Apple Macs are pointless, I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to hate on anybody for using them. This video is completely 100% subjective, and if you're a Mac user watching this video, and you love using Mac OS because it suits to your needs, then this isn't a personal attack on you. It's just that from my personal experience, being a longtime Windows user growing up with Windows XP as a kid, moving up to 7 as a teenager, Windows 10 as an adult, and fiddling around with various Linux distributions over the last 8 or 9 years, I see Mac OS and even Apple in general as like the supreme brand of tech products. And it's for a few reasons. Well, yes it is true that the user interface on Macs look quite nice, and everything in the Apple ecosystem is more streamlined to make the user feel like everything belongs with one another. When you begin to analyze all of the blatantly false information that gets passed around, like the pointless accessories that they introduce, and how they restrict what you, the user, can do with the hardware and software that you purchase, it really makes me question how anyone can see Macs as anything other than a flex. And while some of the things I mentioned in this video on their own may not be a big deal for you, when looked at as a whole can be a death by a thousand needles type of scenario. So where do I begin? Firstly, Apple products are way too expensive for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Mac users can accomplish just as many tasks as Windows when it comes to video editing, word processing, music production, programming, streaming, and image rendering. Unless you're talking about gaming, then Mac is just objectively worse than Windows in that regard. But even if you take gaming out of the equation, then Mac OS still doesn't stand out much in my opinion. For example, with video editing, both Windows and Mac have the entire Adobe suite, they both have the Microsoft Office suite, and they both have different programs and compilers that let you write in multiple programming languages, with both paid and free options available. I know that there are some notable programs that Mac heads swear by to this day, like Final Cut Pro and GarageBand, but why would you waste three grand on a computer just to watch it run a few pieces of software that do literally the exact same thing as its competition? Not only does Windows already have compatibility for the best of the best of the best, like the previously mentioned Adobe Suite and the Microsoft Office Suite, but it also has more options available for the user if they don't feel like paying a premium for software that can be done elsewhere for free, or if they don't feel like using software that can track or collect information from them to sell to third parties. And I'm not talking about piracy here either. Using both Windows and Linux as an example here, they have something called Caden Live, which is not only a very competent video editing software that is pretty much like Sony Vegas, but it's completely open source. Which means that anyone, including you, the viewer watching this video right now, can inspect the source code of Caden Live to check if there's any funny business going on in the background, and verify whether or not you feel comfortable installing it. Mac OS has a lot of the popular open source programs available to them as well, but it's not as encouraged. Everything about the design philosophy behind Apple products treat open source alternative programs like they're a swear word only plebeians can use when in reality they can be better, safer, and less stressful to use than what the Apple storefront charges you for. If you want to use the best editing software for content creation, editing pictures, word processing, then it's already available on Windows. And if you're a Linux nerd like me who's into open source software and having the freedom of knowing what traffic goes in and out of my computer, then Caden Live for video editing, Krita for image editing, LibreOffice for word processing, and Genie for programming gets the job done, does it well, and does it for free. The reason why I bring up the topic of open source software is because the whole attitude behind Macs and even Apple products in general is about being premium for things that just shouldn't be considered premium. But at the same time, Apple wants you to stay in their walled garden by making you think that by purchasing a $3,000 MacBook that you need to have all of these premium programs and 
overpriced lightning cables that do the exact same thing as a mini USB and only work on Apple products. The whole attitude behind Linux, and even Windows to a certain extent, it's not as much as it used to be with Windows, but it's really about freedom and using tools that cater to you. I know Windows has been trying to do the same thing as Apple when it comes to creating their own ecosystem, and uh, they've had a history of doing that, like with games for Windows Live, and more recently with the Microsoft Store, and trying to cram a bunch of bloat that nobody wants down our throats. But the point is, is that it hasn't been very successful, and it's pretty much borderline impossible on Linux. And uh, once 95% of everyone's Steam library becomes compatible with Linux, you can bet your ass that Windows will start to see a decline in the general user space. So the one thing that always keeps me coming back to Linux is the amount of things you can customize in terms of its looks and the way that the user interface is arranged. I said earlier that I installed Linux Mint on my laptop, which comes with multiple options for desktop environments, and I decided to go with Cinnamon this time around, and honestly, the way that the default Cinnamon desktop environment looks is kind of ugly, and I wanted to change it into something more nostalgic, so you know what I did? I downloaded some custom icons and button layouts, and my current Linux Mint laptop went from looking like this to this. And keep in mind, that's just one example of a Linux desktop environment. If you're a fan of custom widgets, KDE Plasma is another desktop environment that will suit your needs. If you want something that looks a bit more like macOS, because you like how everything on Macs look and feel with the icon docs and the main upper taskbar, then Pantheon might be the desktop environment for you. If you're a homosexual, then might I recommend GNOME as the perfect desktop environment for you. Maybe you don't want to use a desktop environment at all, because you don't want any of the extra programs that they come with, and you want to operate everything using the terminal. Then that is 100% doable using the command line interface. With Linux, the possibilities are endless. Another thing that I appreciate about Linux that I wish more people were aware of is that it doesn't try to hold your hand like a five-year-old, by telling you what you can and cannot do. Linux automatically assumes that you understand what you're doing with technical stuff that can make or break your system. You can uninstall any program without any forms of restrictions. You can customize any config file to your liking if something's not working, or if you just want to change something up. And if you wish that there was a way to make your computer do something completely random at startup, like say, prank your nosy friends by creating a script that changes the desktop wallpaper to something horrifying every time they try to log into your computer, with no way to revert back without a separate password locked behind a quiz that you wrote in C or something autistic like that, then chances are there's somebody out there who already did it like five or six years ago. On a lesser note, when it comes to Windows desktop customizability, I used to use something called Rain Meter, which no longer works on modern Windows last time I checked. You were able to add widgets and plugins and install custom themes all made by the online community, and they were neat. Going back to modern Windows for a moment, you have something called Windows Basic, which has always been around, but it's a programming language that lets you do some cool stuff, but it's not as fun as Linux in my opinion, because Microsoft has progressively made Windows more and more streamlined and harder to mess around with. So can you do any of the things I just mentioned on a Mac? No you can't. Whatever your user interface looks like is the interface you'll get forever unless Apple says otherwise. And while it is technically possible to use custom scripts for Macs, it's kind of like Windows in the respect that it's just not as fun to do when compared to Linux. And the Apple Mac interface isn't really designed or catered for you to be doing that anyway. So another tagline that Mac fanboys use against Windows is, Macs are more secure and stable than Windows. And while their reasoning is technically correct depending on what you mean by security and stability, it isn't correct for the reasons that they usually regurgitate to people. It's ignorant to say that Macs are always stable, because they aren't. And it's completely retarded to say that Macs don't get viruses, because they do. While it is true that Macs in general don't have as many viruses as Windows, it's because more people use Windows than any other operating system. It's what hospitals, banks, and offices use, because the software that the employees are trained by is only available on Windows. 
Obviously, you can already see why more exploits are taken advantage of in the Windows space than you would see in the Mac space, and even less so in the Linux space. Macs are not more secure than Windows because they're more expensive or because Apple's ecosystem is better designed, all of that is irrelevant. It's simply because if more people were using Macs in the corporate world, then there would likely be more viruses and exploits in the Mac operating system. But because more people use Windows, you're going to see a lot more vulnerabilities. And it's true. Windows computers factually get more viruses than any other operating system. And I'm sure anyone that's been using them during the Windows XP, LimeWire days, and the Windows Vista days can give you some Iraqi War anime flashback scenarios that describe how many blue screens they got and how many failed marriages that have happened because a Trojan horse infected their family computer with midget tranny porn. But those days have been over for a long time, and Windows has been more secure and more stable now than it's ever been. As long as you aren't installing random programs from third-rate ripoff websites like Softonic, as long as you cancel the installation of a program when Windows Defender tells you that it isn't officially signed by an author or a company that you recognize, instead of just clicking to run the installation wizard anyway like a jackass, then I can assure you from my experience you should be okay. Back in 2019, I bought a pre-built Windows 10 computer from Best Buy. I've used it for about three years before handing it down to my younger brother, after building my current rig, and I can see it lasting even longer than that. But security is a lot more than just viruses. What about tracking? A lot of Windows users, including myself, can agree with the idea that Windows 10 and 11 are basically spyware at this point, that we begrudgingly tolerate because it's the only way to run certain games and software. But what about Macs? How do you know that the Mac ecosystem is more privacy focused? How do you know that they aren't key logging everything you type? How do you know what traffic goes in and out of your Mac computer? If your answer is either I don't know or I don't care because I don't have anything to hide and I've never done anything online that I wouldn't want people to see, then my response to you is you should know and yes you do care and you have done things online that you wouldn't want others to see. Because at this point in the year 2022, everyone has done something on the internet that they don't want everyone to know. Unless you've been in a coma over the last 25 years. Have you ever taken multiple sick days off of work just to lie on the couch and hit the bong? Have you ever tried to make edgy jokes to someone? Have you ever looked at internet pornography? Have you ever had to break up with a girlfriend or a boyfriend because they thought you were cheating on them? Have you ever been charged with a felony or had to declare bankruptcy? Have you ever posted anything on social media that your friends in high school made fun of you for? Well, then there's always a chance that this information can be leaked out to the public. And there's people in your personal life that will mock you for it, no matter how much you pretend it doesn't bother you. And if you need any examples of Apple products or services being exploited, just look up the fappening on Google. Which was a thing back in 2014 where celebrities like Jennifer Lawrence and Kate Upton had their nudes leaked from their personal iCloud accounts, and opportunistic shock value artists try to turn their nudes into art show galleries. There's also the Pac-Man virus that's been infecting the new MacBooks because of a hardware vulnerability found in the M1 chipset. And keep in mind, that's on the hardware level, so that's a really big deal. Or even more recently, the Cloud Mensa spyware that's been targeting Mac users as well. Another thing to note is that Mac OS is completely proprietary. Which means that even if Windows 10 or 11 is less secure and less stable than Macs, nobody except Apple actually knows for sure, because they are the only ones who can examine the source code that was used to create macOS in general. It's the same thing for Windows as well, but my point is that Mac fanboys need to stop saying that their operating system is more privacy focused than Windows, and more secure and stable when they don't even know for sure if it actually is or not. The only real answer I can give you is that any Linux distro is a better option for security, because you can actually inspect the source code for yourself, unlike Mac OS. Maybe Microsoft does less spying on Windows than Apple does with Macs, maybe they don't, but you don't care. You don't have anything to hide, right? All you need is a bunch of soothing colors and a consistent looking user interface to make you feel safe, like an imaginary teddy bear that you can hug to make the creepy dialog boxes and blue screens with scrolling white text go away. Clearly Macintosh computers aren't all that secure and stable, and by extension, Apple Inc. doesn't give two flying fucks about your security and stability either. So to wrap this video up, I just want to reiterate how dumb Mac OS is when you actually start thinking about it. It's like Mac fanboys are the Jews in Apple's Egyptian ecosystem, 
And instead of going to the promised land of Linux's freedom and true security, or the not so great but still more free and better bang for your buck Canaanite Windows, which has all the amenities that the promised land has the potential for, they would rather be more oppressed because of the fear of having to give up everything that they are currently being provided in exchange for the chance of having a better way of living. Apple computers don't provide the same freedom, customizability, stability, or security that Linux provides, and they charge their customers up the bunghole for things that could be done on Windows for a fraction of the price, or even for free. And despite Windows having a bad reputation back in the 2000s for being ugly, unstable, and prone to viruses like a Midwestern hooker, I feel like those issues are more subjective now, since Windows 10 and even Windows 11 looks really nice and I haven't had any issues using it in the last seven years that they've been available. But I want to know what you guys think. If you're a Mac user, then I want to know what you think as well. And feel free to make a response video to me as well, because I'm genuinely curious as to what your opinions are. Alright, so I'll see you all later. Peace out.